There was a recent article that was very popular that said Tesla was the reason for legacy auto manufacturers pivoting to LFP batteries. Is this true? Well, Volkswagen and Mercedes have both announced within the last few months that they'll be pivoting to use LFP batteries in their base models. Now, I don't know if you can claim that Tesla was the reason for this, but it certainly appears as though they may have played a role. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. It's great to have you here on the channel, you new subscribers. Welcome back to everyone else. Now, 2022, it's been, wow, I have so many tabs open my, on my computer right now. There's so much news to tell you guys about. I, I don't know where to start sometimes, but I think this is important. Now, obviously, the LFP battery craze didn't start with Tesla. We all know that. It's obvious it started in China many years ago. There was a patent on LFP batteries so that only Chinese companies can manufacture them. That has since expired. Now, LG Chem, the world's second largest battery manufacturer, is saying they're going to pivot to overtake CATL, the world's largest battery manufacturer, by manufacturing lithium-ion phosphate batteries. Well, one of the key reasons for this is because well, fires in electric cars happen very, very infrequently. Apparently, about 100 times less frequently on a ratio basis versus gas vehicles. So it's very rare. But obviously, the media just jumps on any battery fires. Therefore, lithium-ion phosphate batteries not only being cheaper and having a longer usable life, also are a big advantage because they virtually never set fire. LG Chem has had battery fire issues. Uh, Volkswagen has had some battery issues. And now, interestingly, Volkswagen are pivoting to using lithium ion phosphate batteries in their cheaper models, and so will Mercedes. So is it Tesla that influences? Absolutely. BYD influenced Tesla. Tesla influenced Volkswagen. Volkswagen influenced Mercedes. Tesla influenced Mercedes. You know, who cares? It doesn't really matter, does it? The point here is that this is actually good for all of us because this will bring down the cost of our cars and it will mean the vehicle you have if you buy a vehicle with LFP batteries, it's simply the battery is going to last longer. It's just a fact. So what have Mercedes said? Well, to be honest, I am quite disappointed in what Mercedes have said. They're saying we are going to use LFP batteries, but they're kind of doing something similar to what they did when they said we're going to start building our own electric motors, but not for four years. I mean, come on. Is it really going to take you four years to come up with a, a motor? You're a legacy auto company. I thought you guys could pivot in a week to do anything you want. Why is it taking that long? Anyway, I feel the same way about their announcement on LFP batteries. Now, Daimler CEO, Ola, I can't pronounce his surname, Kalinius, revealed recently that some of the Mercedes-Benz cars will be powered by lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, I've made quite a few videos about lithium ion phosphate batteries. So if you're new to the channel, I'll put some links in the description below to some of those videos. This type of cell is less expensive and will help to bring down the costs in the price sensitive segments. Now, as many of you know, Mercedes does make a lot of cheap cars as well as premium expensive cars. So the idea for Mercedes would be probably to put these LFP batteries into their cheaper electric cars. Now, Higher end models with long range would generally require more energy dense batteries, but I think that might change in coming into the future as well news of Tesla's contract with Goshan High Tech for 200 gigawatt hours per year of LFP batteries with an energy density of 210 watts per kilo suggests that while well, energy density of LFP batteries is significantly improving and may not be an issue in the future. Now, according to Bloomberg's interview in Atlanta via Electriv, we might see LFP-powered Mercedes-Benz EQB cars coming to the market in 24 and 2025, with the next generation Mercedes-Benz EQA and the Mercedes-Benz EQB, which currently use 66.5 kilowatt hour battery. Now, obviously, the EQA and the EQB are more of the budget type Mercedes vehicles. And they said, we think there will be a lot of urban-oriented customers that don't need an E63 AMG. That's coming from the CEO, by the way, Kalenius. For those entry-level positions in the future, we're looking at lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, personally, I find this kind of ironic because I would prefer a car with LFP batteries in it. 
And considering the more significant range improvement in the latest Tesla Model 3 with LFP batteries, I think that you know we're starting to see some of these issues improve those batteries in that one drawback area, which is range. By 2024, 2025, they may not be considered budget anymore. They might, they might be think people might be saying, well, actually, we want LFP batteries in our premium cars. That is a possibility if this energy density continues to increase, which it very well may. Now, Mercedes does not reveal who might be the supplier of its LFP batteries, but they have already partnered with CATL, one of the, well, the largest manufacturer in the world of LFP batteries to use CATL's NCM batteries in some of its cars, including the EQS, as well as LFP batteries in trucks and buses that it currently produced or plans to produce this year. Now, it's, it, it is an interesting fact here, isn't it, to think that Mercedes-Benz is using batteries from CATL in its EQS. I mean, that's not a cheap car. It's a very expensive electric car. And to say, well, the batteries just come from CATL in China. I mean, how many people do you think who buy Mercedes comment in these comment forums and say, you can never buy a Chinese car. I would never do that. It's trash. Well, little do they know, their battery is probably made in China. So there you go. Something worth thinking about. Now, the use that Mercedes will use LFP batteries in its entry-level models or base range versions it's not surprising at all. It's totally practical, it's logical, it makes sense. It's a really good way to reduce costs. And honestly, I think, get people uh, a, batter a battery that's gonna be better for them long-term anyway. Now, Tesla obviously is doing this in its standard range Model 3 and its Model Y. And Chinese brands use LFP, well, some of them exclusively. For example, BYD, about 90% of its electric cars come with LFP batteries. Now, my prediction is that within five years, I think at least 60% of the global electric car market will come with batteries powered by LFP, lithium ion phosphate. Now, here's an interesting comment from Inside EVs. They said, we guess that most of the cars with battery packs up to 60 to 70 kilowatt hours will be LFP powered in the future. Having a bigger battery though, increases the weight to a point at which NCM NCA or other types are favorable. So they're saying that if your battery is more than 70 kilowatt hour in size, then it makes sense to have an NCA or NCM chemistry battery, not an LFP battery, because the weight is a drawback when you get above that size. But I don't think that's necessarily gonna be true in the future. As we're starting to see now with this increased energy density in LFP batteries, I think that probably won't be an issue, but it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Let me know in the comment section below. If you're going to buy an electric car and you could choose, would you get NCA NCM chemistry or an LFP battery if it was just completely up to you to get to make that decision? And the range was say within 10%. Remember, range is not quite a comparable figure because you can you can charge your LFP battery to 100%. That is not an issue. It doesn't increase degradation of the battery. But if you do that in an NCA and NCM chemistry battery, it actually does influence your battery degradation. It can cause pretty significant battery degradation within only a few years. So really, the range of your NCA and NCM chemistry battery is really 10% lower than a comparable range from an LFP battery. So let me know what you would pick. I'm interested to know why you would pick what you choose. Let me know in the comment section below. Have a great day. I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.